this program we discuss some of the important aspects of selecting and establishing apiary sites for efficient economic production, health of colonies and ease of management. The obvious major consideration when selecting an apiary site is to reward colonies with easy access to reliable, good quality nectar and pollen sources. Honeybees require a balanced diet of nectar, pollen and water, so locating colonies in safe locations with safe flight paths to these resources is very important. It's important to have a thorough knowledge of nectar and pollen producing plants and there are many books available on these subjects. Commercial beekeepers select sites where a major species is flowering to reward their colonies with nectar and pollen. Bees left on such sites for a few months by commercial beekeepers are usually moved to new feed source areas, however recreational beekeepers are more likely to locate their colonies for longer periods where flora provides nectar and pollen most of the year, often in urban areas. For obvious reasons, sites should be selected that provide optimum nectar and pollen sources with access to good quality water, as each colony may use up to four litres of water a day during hot weather. Sites should be selected where possible, close to home base, to keep relevant transport and site supervision costs to a minimum. Access to the site is very important. Avoid those sites that require a four-wheel drive or areas that might be cut off during local flooding. Flat sites are a huge advantage for inspections, loading, unloading, management and good general site supervision. Sites can be obtained on private property readily by seeking permission from the landowner. It's quite usual to reward the landowner with honey produced from the area. And it's good business practice for the beekeeper to take out public liability insurance and fire insurance when colonies are located on both private lands and government owned lands. Open sunny sites are preferred, but sites offering some shade are also an advantage in very hot weather. Avoid areas where floods are likely to occur and avoid areas of high fire risk. Some thought also needs to be given to the risk of theft and vandalism in some areas. Nuisance factors can also be a serious issue for beekeepers. Avoid placing apiaries near gateways, stockyards, livestock watering points, dams, camping areas and so on. Sometimes it may be necessary to watch for and control local pest insects such as ants. These can be controlled using baits as long as the bait can be removed and is in a protective covering that prevents non-target species having access with the landowner's permission. In some areas it may be necessary to protect hives from cane toads by locating the colonies on stands and it's vital to avoid locating hives in areas that might be subjected to insecticide spray or even accidental spray drift. It's also important to avoid locating colonies near sugar mills, factories, feedlots and feed mills as at certain times bees will rob from such sources for protein or sweet substances. And equally important for recreational beekeepers is to locate colonies away from human traffic restrict colony numbers and keep in mind that hive entrances should not face lights in built-up areas. With both commercial and recreational beekeeping, it's very easy to overstock hives, so regular examination of the colony is good practice to observe stored pollen and nectar supplies. As far as local flora is concerned, it's advisable to inspect carefully to ensure the plants and trees are free of nectar and pollen-eating insects, as generally speaking, these insects work on blossom day and night, denying bee access to valuable nutrition. Check under the bark of eucalyptus trees for the presence of bogong moths, as these insects forage at night. Another general rule when selecting a colony site is to avoid having to feed the bees protein supplements or sugar syrup. You can see if nectar, pollen or insects are present in the blossom by hitting blossom on a vehicle window. Nectar, pollen or insects are easily seen on the glass or by observing if the bees are collecting pollen or nectar. 
Commercial beekeepers often seek nectar or pollen flows depending on the colony's requirements, often from a single species. Most honey production comes from eucalypts. Depending on the species, from budding to flowering can vary from 8 weeks up to 18 months, thus allowing the beekeeper to plan ahead moves to new sites. Australia is unique in that honey flows can occur in winter. Some beekeepers overwinter colonies in cold areas where the bees get no rewards to overwinter colonies, leaving sufficient honey for the bees to survive winter and hibernate. By observing these basic rules with the selection and establishment of an apiary site, efficient economic production is assured, along with the good colony health and ease of supervision and management. Thank you.